thoughts which are there before the corporate world today. Uh, one, mostly companies find that these are very uncertain circumstances. The legal environment at times is very uncertain. Number one, maybe because the law which is being made, so many bills have been pending, so many things were pending before the legislature or the cabinet itself was not uh, passing or moving on with all those activities. Second, the law making process it becomes very slow and third, the power of judicial review which ultimately gives the final authority for the courts because the Supreme Court is the final arbiter of the constitution as well as whatever the laws are made by the legislative bodies. So, it becomes a bit too uncertain for any business person, any business leader to anticipate what is going to happen. And one of the main purposes of law, as it has been said in a catalog of judgments, is to move towards certainty, provide predictability, so that everyone knows that in a situation if A plus B is equal to C, then A1 plus B1 is definitely going to be C1. So, there is something called predictability and I know that this is for sure going to happen. But if there is no predictability, how can a business leader plan, strategize, think about the future, anticipate and make the next move? The corporate world is facing a lot of problems, whether it is because of changes in the companies act, corporate criminal liability, law regarding environment, all these things are creating a lot of confusion in the mind of corporate. So I would request his lordship to let, let us know a little bit about it and what can the business leaders do to live in a world, in a situation, at least in India what we see, which is very uncertain. So how can a person do business in this uncertain world? Professor Agarwal is absolutely right when he says about delay and pendency of cases. In fact, judiciary is not unaware of this burning problem. But I may tell you that uh, judiciary has also its own limitations. I had worked as lawyer, high court judge, chief justice, and also judge of the Supreme Court, highest court of the country. But I can also say that we have, that is judiciary, we are not defending ourselves, but we may say that we have our own limitations also. Say for instance, several persons go to even Supreme Court also. Now, if you are aware, at present, there are only 31 judges, highest 31 judges. There may be few vacancies, but suppose there is no vacancy at all, there also 1 plus 30. One Chief Justice of India and 30 other judges. Now, as against that, how many cases are registered? I am audible, no? How many cases are registered? I may tell you my experience. Every Friday, each and every court has about 60 to 65 cases for admission. And every Monday, there are about 80 to 85 cases. I am not joking, I am not saying, honestly I am saying you that virtually two days judges used to read Saturday, Sunday because 80, 85 enters. That Thursday night we don't even receive telephones because we have to read those papers. Now, if in these circumstances it takes time, I am not saying that we are not responsible for delay. But we have also our own limitations, we are also human beings. So this is with regard to delay and uh, this pendency of cases. With regard to power of judicial review, he is right. That ultimately what the Supreme Court says is correct. But then it can be said that it is, it is a doctrine of necessity. In fact, the, the, such a question arose also in the before the um, United States Supreme Court, Supreme Court of America. See what happened, the question before the court was whether judges are liable to pay tax or not. 
Now, obviously, who will decide? Judges decided. Judges wrongly. I, I say so sometimes we decide wrongly also. But ultimately, somebody will decide. And decision power is not given to parliament. Decision power is not given to executive. Decision power is always with the judiciary. So sometimes even wrong decision. I said, no, I could say that all decisions are correct. But that is doctrine of necessity that is how it is done. Third is very important. And there, uh, as a student of law, I may say that is absolutely right. That there must be certainty and predictability. In fact, uh, one of the very, very, very major advantages, one of the very major advantages or benefits of law, written law is that law is certain, law is predictable. You will be able to know what the law is. Now, if judges, one judge takes one view, another judge or another bench will take another view, it may create some problems, it may create uncertainty, it may create unpredictability, it should be avoided. But at the same time, ultimately, judges, sometimes we may say that judges are also human beings, some are very liberal, some are very strict, some are conservative, some are, say, liberalistic approach. So, something is bound to happen, it should not happen, I agree. But at the same time, sometimes it happens also, that is how the system works. Uh, there are a number of questions from the audience and uh, some of these particularly relate to the delay in the judicial process and uh, as his lordship has already addressed those issues, I would not be taking those questions. Uh, this is one by Amit Kumar, which is uh, in fact the same thing what, is, uh, what has been talked about. The other is about how important is alternative dispute resolution in today's situation. This is by Mr. Ajit Partha especially with the growing number of pending court cases. Uh, maybe a little bit about alternative dispute resolution. Uh, His Lordship can talk a little bit about maybe arbitration or uh, the relevance of ADR in today's world when we are facing so much backlog. In fact, this is also one of the modes of settlement of disputes and it is always good. In fact, even the legislature has also encouraged it. And the reason is that it is, as I have told you, it is virtually impossible for traditional judiciary to cope up with the world and to deal with all cases. Otherwise, one thing is that judiciary is judiciary. And even common man has also faith in judiciary. But if something is done well and good, even now, if you see, even there are uh, several statutes, amendment in several codes, including Code of Civil Procedure also, that it has been incorrect. Arbitration, conciliation, mediation, everything is done. And there is now, I may tell you, that uh, there are several steps in that direction, and which may be that in future we may be able to cope up with the work. But for the time being, it is uh, still at a, at, a, at, a, at a new stage, or uh, at this stage, which may take some time. Is another question coming for arbitration X from Mansi and which has been already answered. Uh, actually, I am reminded uh, when your Lordship uh, tell us about the number of cases which are being filed in the day on in the Supreme Court as Friday and on Thursday evenings uh, and several days. I, I remember about 10 years back, uh, one of the Chief Justices wrote that before being elevated to the Supreme Court and what was the normal practice Every evening there would be a tempo load of files which would be coming to his residence and uh, he is bound to go through everything because he has to come prepared tomorrow morning in that court. So he said, before I was elevated to the Supreme Court, I always thought that uh, that bonded labor has been abolished in India. So, but it was like the, the amount of work which is expected. Okay, uh, that is one. The other is uh, some very interesting thoughts which, has come, which have come from the audience regarding uh, the tort litigation and the amount of compensation and damages which are being awarded, why is it not commensurate or being realistic in terms in today's world? Uh, because uh, people feel that uh, uh, at times these are very low amounts which are being awarded, for example, in Bhopal Gas Tragedy or Baha Cinema and several other cases. So some of those thoughts which people have asked, uh, one question which has uh, really come is about why the compensation to victims. This is by Akash Bansal. Why is in tort law assessing compensation to victims in case of class action lawsuits proceeded the same way as it is done in the United States? 
why is life value so low according to the courts in India? In fact, I may tell you one thing. As a student of law also, that if there is development of law towards it really shows consciousness of right by citizens, by persons. It must be encouraged. Only thing is that uh, with regard to quantum of damages, there are two views. One is that your grievance must be ventilated. In fact, uh, there is a report and decision also, where it was stated that there was a malicious prosecution. Malicious prosecution means what? that a person knows that you have not committed any wrong or any offense and yet you are prosecuted. A person was prosecuted by A on allegation that he had committed robbery or depoity. Now he has not committed anything. Therefore, not only he was acquitted by a competent court, but the court said that it was a false case filed against him. In that case, he can go to a court of law and state that, sir, I have been falsely prosecuted. It, is vex it was vexatious, false, frivolous litigation. And the court will say that, all right, we will award you damages. We will award you compensation. Now, one view is that, all right, we will give you token amount of X. Amount X. Now, there, the reasoning behind it, I am not saying this whether this view is correct or other view is correct. One view is that your grievance is ventilated. Since the court came to the conclusion that what has been taken against you or what that the prosecution was launched against you was illegal, you must be paid some amount and say for instance, a hypothetical, I am awarding rupees 100 to you. The amount is immaterial. But what is taken to be as, as principle or what is granted is that we have taken not of injustice done to you. In another case, suppose some, some news is given and the court is said that no exemplary table, say for example, 100 crores is awarded. Now it is said that uh, it is also quite correct. One may say that it is not correct. But that is how it has been, it has been worked. And that is how it has been said. In fact, I may tell you that uh, as I have told you in habeas corpus, that is when just now I had said you know, that uh, a person is imprisoned or a person is detained or a person is put behind bars. And then subsequently it was found that it was with malafide intention or with bad intention that the person was uh, imprisoned in jail. The court used to award some amount. And at that point of time, it may be said that even one leg may not be sufficient. But status quo entity is immaterial, particularly say uh, motor accident cases. Now, I suppose a wrong side and yet uh, 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 another person, pedestrian, who had nothing to do with going to the vehicle uh, and he dies, obviously something will have to be done. A person who is dead now cannot come. But you will have to pay some amount by way of compensation. Now, these two principles, one is, as far as possible, status quo entity must be restored. The other view is, that all right, taken a note of, and your grievance <coughs> is ventilated, and some amount is paid. Now, these are the two views, sometimes some judges follow A view, some judges follow B view. Uh, there is another question coming from Divya Suresh, that laws for public and private corporations with regard to graft and corruption are different. So, uh, why different yardsticks are used for public and private corporations? Maybe for private, these are very harsh and uh, for public, maybe not so harsh. And uh, So, why different yardsticks and why different laws are used for such a purpose? The only thing is that uh, you may say that corruption is corruption. And corruption cannot be tolerated in any society. It may be even private or public corporations. Only thing is that uh, in respect of government companies, public corporations, some statutes are there. And where the statutes intervene, then you will have to follow proper procedure and thereafter take appropriate action in accordance with law. With regard to punishment, again, I may tell you that again it depends upon the judge and theory. In fact, uh, 
I may tell you that in law there are certain theories of punishment. One is that tooth for a tooth and eye for an eye, which is something known as retributive theory. Another theory sometimes which is uh, taken care of or which is uh, sought to be uh, pressed worth, reformative theory. In fact, uh, uh, in one case uh, when some ladies were in jail, they said that sir, we want Shikakai so for the purpose of uh, our uh, that uh, Okay. Okay. Sometimes it is said that uh, it, it encourages them. Now maybe that uh, some may be of the view that uh, reformative theory is better, some may say retributive is better, some may say preventive theory. Some may say that no, it must be done properly. These are all again, as I have told you, it depends upon some, I, I don't say 100%, but some viewpoints of uh, individual judges also. There are uh, several questions and uh, sort of uh, asking for comments from his lordship, uh, which I would like to club together as, uh, as because these are all related to the topic like rule of law. And uh, for example, this is uh, P. Kunal Singh. My question is why in India the process of punishing the accused is very slow. For example, lots of crores of rupees have been spent for the accused casa. They say uh, if it is going to take so long to prove that the culprit is accused, Although when the Republic of India, they have identified him as the main culprit. So, maybe uh, this is one rule of law thing. The other, should justice be subject to cost-benefit analysis in terms of banning law value display? And uh, this is by Anand Sundar. And uh, can we have some special codes, fast-track codes, high value for high value cases? Again, I would say that uh, I would uh, request uh, your lordship to talk about a little bit about rule of law and how this is uh, because there are a number of questions which are uh, coming from the audience which can be clubbed together under this topic. In fact, rule of law, it has been so far as our constitution, Indian legal position or Indian legal system is concerned, it can be said that it is the basic feature or basic structure of our constitution. So rule of law must prevail in England, in America, in India, this is accepted principle. And generally, I, I will not say there are one, second, third meeting, but rule of law means all are equals before in law, before legal system. There may be few prerogatives or few, say, additional rights, but otherwise everybody is subject to law. And law is equal for all, one and all. Now, with regard to special courts, delay, high value cases, it is not unknown that special courts have been created sometimes. For instance, even after that I have told you just now before that 1975 election uh, losing by one party, another party came to power, special courts were established. Even now there are certain cases if you are aware G's came and other cases where special courts have been constituted and it is said that they will take care of but I agree that several years are taken for courts. in some cases for instance if this uh, Gopal guest tragedy if such a case several just thousands of people die and yet it, take, it takes about uh, say more than two decades Sometimes it is said that uh, it is very difficult to, to, to defend such a situation. But this is a ground reality which we cannot ignore. Uh, there is uh, one more talking about uh, corruption, whether in political scenario, politi politics, whether in corporates, or whether in judiciary itself. So uh, there are uh, thoughts and anxiety among the people, how do you address corruption in judiciary? Uh, when there are so many such cases which are happening. That is one. The other which is talking about uh, what can be done about the social, the corporate social responsibility of different companies and uh, can, should it be made compulsory. Uh, then there are those issues of uh, corporate social responsibility, the responsibility of corporates. And uh, then it sort of uh, is on that periphery. Uh, how do you draw the line between the ethical conduct and legal? Whether uh, ethics and law, these two are the same things, or these are watertight compartments, 
uh, how do we understand the distinction between ethics and law? And uh, for any individual who is practicing uh, any, any profession or even is a business person, should is it necessary for him to be ethical also? Because he knows that if he is not going to be on the right side of law, he will be penalized. But what about the ethics? And uh, that brings in the question of corruption, whether in politics or corporate or even judicial. Corruption is corruption. It may be politics, in political field, it may be in any other field, or it may be in judiciary. And it must be dealt with high identity. There is no doubt about it, very strictly. But then there are uh, certain limitations also. Sometimes it is said that uh, it may take long time, it has a delay, sometimes even witnesses do not come forward, sometimes the evidence is lacking. But otherwise it is true that uh, one of the burning problems of the day and in all fields, that is legislature, executive and judiciary, the problem is there. In fact, uh, I was a party to Supreme Court decision wherein that uh, if you are aware that uh, parliament members Operation Duryodhan, if you are aware, that uh, two cross rupees were given by uh, this to each parliamentarian, that is uh, the member of parliament. And then uh, it was said that uh, he will, in his discretion, spend that uh, amount. And some contracts were given, and uh, there was uh, something like known as uh, sting operation. And in that sting operation, it was said that there was settlement between the member of parliament on the one hand and the contractor on the other hand and some amount was to be paid to the member of parliament. A committee was constituted, ultimately it was found that yes, uh, there was such contract and they were expelled from parliament, means virtually they were unseated. And that uh, decision was challenged by filing writ petition in some high courts, in Delhi high court, and then Supreme Court passed the order that all matters must be placed before the Supreme Court and it, uh, a bench of five judges was constituted. I was one of the members of the bench and uh, except one judge, one judge said that it cannot be done. But uh, a majority, three judges, then I also, I was a party to that, I also said that such persons can be expelled and can be said that you must go on. Corruption has no, no no voice or it, it, it cannot stand in judiciary. Uh, it, it cannot stand in parliament or legislature. Obviously, it cannot stand in judiciary also. So that is how it can be done. Now, with regard to ethics or moral and law, Mahatma Gandhi rightly said that not only your end must be correct or pure, but means also must be. Therefore, you cannot say that by any means I will uh, achieve a particular end. And uh, personally speaking, again I am saying that this is my opinion, but I, I feel and I strongly feel that not only end should be pure, but even means must be pure. I am reminded of uh, one poet who had said, Apna sukhvi ek hai sathi, apna dukhvi ek. Apni manzil, sachki manzil, so not only end, but means also. By, by, by impure means you cannot achieve end which you can say to be pure. Then it is impure. And nothing is tolerable. Now to what extent we will be succeed? In fact, we have completed our inning. You are today and tomorrow of India and I I I earnestly request you to, to keep this in mind. Any last message you would like to give to our participants? This I have said that <laughs> okay. uh, in fact, uh, for students, that is why whenever I, I am invited to any college or any school, I say that uh, you are tomorrow. And you must take care of all situations. Inclu I am also going to all judges from grassroots level, civil judge, junior division, up to chief justice of high court. And I tell them that uh, 
whatever it is, we have completed our career or our any. But you must take, say for example, punctuality. I say that sometimes they say from 11 to 5. And um, when I was a judge, at least uh, I don't uh, remember that uh, I was late even for a minute, I tell you. I am honestly, I am not saying that uh, before you. In, in, sim, in Simla, when I was the Chief Justice, their court is of 10 and comparatively a, a, that uh, cold weather is also there. But then, always before then, I am always in the court. Now, if punctuality, sincerity, honesty is not, uh, say, completely observed by you, who will do that? So, I only say, and this is again not advice, I am not that, uh, say, old or that great, but I may say that you must take care of your position and if everybody will take his position clear and will follow, then obviously there is no problem whatsoever. 